Well, hey friends, I am so glad that you're here. Today we are going to be getting a lot done. I am hoping to get some cleaning done as I'm currently noticing cobwebs in the corner of my window frame in the kitchen. Like I'm all the time in front of that window frame. How, how disgusting is that? I also hope to get some organizing done. I hope to get some decluttering done. I just feel like we have so much stuff to manage and I, I don't know that we really do. We have a lot in storage buildings right now, but even just this whole situation, it's just from the last couple of days. Like I've really been trying to do a good job this summer of staying on top of cleaning, staying on top of deep cleaning, staying on top of laundry, dishes, all of the things. And somehow in the last couple of days, it has turned into this. We also have a ton of groceries that we need to go get probably today we may just take a family trip and we just like let the family go wild in the grocery store because we just need to get a lot stored up so that we can focus on all the other things in life right now and not have to worry about constantly running out of stuff there's a lot going on so it'll be a couple of days that i'm taking you along for in this video our usually good sleeper was up a couple of hours early today so i thought what better motivation than to get up and get some stuff done than an early Saturday morning start. I am a few sips into my coffee, so I'll be taking that along as well. I need to go ahead and get changed and then we can get to it. Organize, declutter, get groceries. If you want to weed eat, that'd be cool. Yeah, I do really need to. Good stuff. If you're new here or maybe you just started hanging around in the last couple of months, you may not know that I actually teach half day at my daughter's preschool. Last year I taught in the baby room. This year I will be teaching the pre-K. So our summer break will soon be coming to a close and we will all be heading back to school for some pre-planning. But I went in recently, like the day before I started filming all of this, because I needed to print out my new classroom bundle. Since I'm moving classrooms, I'm kind of having to redo a lot of stuff and I'm excited to get to. I'm going to be sharing that with you all in the near future, but I went in to print it all out, get laminating supplies so that I could work on that from home and get it cut and everything. And that way, whenever we go in for pre-planning, I just need to hang it all up and get to decorating. And I have a lot of other things to focus on at that time. so. All of this to say, whenever I went in to print and kind of get an idea of how I want to do my classroom design and all, I became so overwhelmed. <laughs> and part of that is because of all that I need to do for my classroom. The other part of that, multiple teachers were there that day and we all had our children. So there was about seven or eight kids and it was just absolute chaos. And then I came home and I felt like I needed to keep working on classroom stuff so that I could get that done and out of the way off my mind. Well, then our house just fell behind for a couple of days and it was just, oh my word. I just felt like I had so much to do in every area of life. I was also kind of reminded of how tired I am whenever I am focused on school stuff, even though it's just half day. I mean, I don't know how full day teachers do it. I do not know because by the time I came home around lunchtime, um, a little bit after, I guess it was closer to two o'clock. By the time we got home and I got my girls settled into nap time and quiet time, I was absolutely drained. And then, you know, you, you see all this madness around my house. And <laughs> I know that in some areas you just have to give yourself grace and in certain seasons of life. And of course, once we get into a rhythm of the school year and my classroom is put together, I'll feel a little bit more like I'm put together, I guess. But in the meantime, I felt like my house was an absolute wreck. My classroom was starting from ground zero and had so far to go. And I just was feeling like the wheels were coming off the train. So before that happened, I took on the mentality. I was like, we're about to make this place look like an Airbnb. Like we are going to make this look like nobody lives here. <laughs> and that's being dramatic. I really didn't want it to look like nobody lived here, but I wanted it to look like we cared about our house and that we were not so bombarded with stuff that every square inch of floor space and wall space and everything was covered. So 
that was kind of what I set out for. I wanted to declutter. I wanted to get past the mess of our everyday so that I could see the dirt that's hiding in all the corners and the crevices and really get that cleaned. Hoping that then when we go back into the school year, I will come home and feel like I can breathe and rest. And obviously it's something that will have to be maintained and stayed on top of um, as we go. But it it really just needed this big reset, I guess you could say, before school started back. And like I mentioned, another thing that really needed to be reset was our pantry and our refrigerator, our shelves, just our groceries all together, you guys. We had absolutely, like, I mean, I am one that if someone tells me that we don't have anything to eat, I question them a million times. I'm like, well, did you look in the freezer? Did you see flour in the pantry did you you know like we can make things without having a lot of stuff on our shelves that's just the simple truth however i will i will say we had so little in our house that like every time the girls would ask for a simple snack anytime my husband would you know want to eat a meal like a sandwich for lunch we just didn't have it and i guess I had just been trying to like use up what we had because one groceries are so expensive right now and two I'd just been so preoccupied with a ton of other things that I had not taken the time to make a grocery order and go pick it up that being said we went to the grocery store and we got so much stuff and honestly for what we paid I guess maybe you would say it wasn't that much stuff but Either way, it felt good because I just stocked up on boxes and boxes of pasta and so many canned foods. I was hoping that we would have more from our garden from this year that we could freeze and keep throughout the winter, but we ended up eating most of what we got, and it was our first year having a garden this size, so I got a better idea of like what a realistic expectation is for that size of a garden and it's just not what I thought it would be so that's totally fine but I had to figure out where to put stuff we have bulk storage shelves in our closet which we use for pantry items as well as some other things if you saw my non-aesthetic closet transformation then you got to see those more up close and a more detailed version of that but that is where I was trying to put everything because we don't have a basement we don't have like an outdoor storage cellar or anything where we can keep food um, so this is what we got and this is what I was trying to work with and this is honestly if I'm being completely honest this is the first time in over two years since we moved into this house that I have thought we could really use more space Back in the winter, I set up our home apothecary with some natural herbs for loose leaf teas and different salves that I still would like to try to make and tinctures and whatnot. But one thing that I love to fall back on whenever I'm feeling anxious or stressed is this tea recipe and it's just passion flower, lavender, and yarrow. And there are so many benefits. I've also been feeling like sinus pressure and swollen lymph nodes. So I think there's something blooming. I've heard that from many people around here. So we just put some honey in there and that's how I finish my day. It's a wonderful way to ease into a good night of sleep and I highly recommend it. Okay, so we got a good bit of cleaning done over the weekend. It is now Monday. Yesterday was a bit crazy. We had church for most of the morning. It was also my oldest daughter Rosie's birthday. And so yesterday afternoon, I was busy getting her cake and everything. And then last night we had family come over to enjoy some cake and for her to open presents. So it was a sweet time, but I really didn't get much done around my house, um, which is totally okay. So we are picking back up with that today. And now we are really leaning more into the organization side of it, um, mostly with toy organization, but that is the majority of my house. So I guess you could also call it home organization. I'm going to be implementing some of the same tools and strategies that I'm implementing in my classroom into my home with our toy management. 
We have decluttered toys. I'm continuously going through them. Just the other day I went through and got out like all of the just random ones that really don't stand alone well, but they don't go with anything. And I put them in the trash. Some things I put in a bin to go to my classroom or to other classrooms at our school for different ages. Um, some things I put in my car to go to a thrift store and some things we have that family could use for their children. Um, so just figuring out where things are best placed is always a challenge, but right now I'm sitting down at my computer. The girls are starting to wake up, so I'm trying to get this done quickly. I'm going to go ahead and make some labels. I got some bins from Aldi. If you are sleeping on Aldi, wake up because... I looked at like the fabric cube storage bin things at um, Walmart the other day and they were $10 a piece, just shy of it. And whenever I went to Aldi yesterday to pick up some protein powder, I was walking down the fun aisle because you have to when you go to Aldi. And they had theirs for two for $5. So I got four of them, um, two two packs, and I'm using those to kind of organize all of the little pieces, like the people and the characters and the cars and the trains and the buses and the planes and all of those things. Um, also may use some for like Barbie storage. I don't know, we have a lot of Barbies, so we may need something bigger. What I am learning and have learned is that if you simply have baskets and bins, it becomes very frustrating because usually in my experience, I am the only one that knows what goes in each basket or bin and as many times as I try to like encourage my daughters or do it with them or whatever it ends up just being a free-for-all and it's like no I want everything from that bin to go into this basket or I want to combine these three bins into this one huge basket and so then you have tons and tons of little pieces and it just helps to have labels it's a lot of work on the front end but for their little minds, it's easier for them to visualize and it's one less thing that they're having to learn every single day or one less thing that they're having to be taught. They can figure it out themselves and feel a sense of accomplishment. I think whenever they see those labels and they put two and two together of like, oh, I'm holding a Barbie and that bin has a Barbie on it, on its label. So I'm going to put it there. Like this makes sense to me. Let me go do that. And they have that sense of accomplishment that they just completed a task without needing any help from anyone. So I'm hoping that this is more effective. Like I said, we have decluttered and downsized and pared down. And I still wish that we could be a minimalist household at times and only have like 10 books at a time and, you know, three of their favorite toys each. But they really do play with everything that we've got out. And... The ones that they don't play with quite as often, I'm hoping that by labeling a little better, they will remember that they have it there and they'll utilize it more because it it is things that can be easily incorporated into the stuff that they're already playing with. So like certain planes or cars and they're already playing with like this huge village that they've created. So if they don't incorporate them, if they still choose not to play with them very much or ever at all, then we will get rid of them somehow. We will find a place for them to go where they will be well loved and taken care of. But for now, I'm trying to kind of implement some centers around our house, which is what a lot of classrooms do um, and what I will be doing in the next few weeks for now, trying to get my own house in order. So some of the little centers that I'm trying to implement around our house with what we already have, and it'll look a little bit different because it is a house, right? It's not a classroom where you have all these divider bookshelves and things like that. It's just, just a house. Like the living room is the playroom. This is what we got and this is how we're gonna make it work. So within that, we have arts and crafts, sensory and science is kind of one, um, blocks and things that move, things that go, reading, dramatic play, and then Barbies. And those are kind of the biggest um, categories that we have here. So, and the ones that we play with most often and the ones that I know are beneficial for them as they are developing and growing their little minds. I am very excited, but right now I'm trying to work on these um, labels and then we'll go put them on the bins and set up some more of the centers. I have to use quotes because it's 
it's really not centers. It's just different ways that I can organize things in my own house. I feel like I am constantly trying to come up with better systems for how to arrange toys in our house. And I actually had a very honest conversation with my husband whenever we went to pick up groceries. I asked him if he thought that we lived in a pigsty. He just point blank said, well, I mean, since you asked, <laughs> he said, that's not your fault by any means. But he was saying that, you know, com in comparison to our previous house, yes, this one often feels like it is way in much more disarray than how we have lived up until this point. And part of that, a large part of that is because we have added a child since we moved into this house. The child that we already had in our old house was not really old enough to make messes. She was like one when we moved here. So we have two toddlers who are into everything now and they're playing and they're learning and I love that they're making messes. That's part of what they're supposed to be doing at this age. Another part of it is that we had a basement in our old house. We had an upstairs with two bedrooms. So if things did not have a place or if it felt or looked too cluttered, I would either put it upstairs in the guest bedroom, which never got used, or I would put it down in the basement. And that was just our solution. It wasn't a good one. I'm not saying that I wish we could go back to doing that because this is a much better way um, of holding ourselves accountable to not having too much stuff and to actually only keeping what we need or what we really love. So I'm not at all disappointed by his response. I think that I probably already knew the answer to the question before I asked it, but it was also probably the honest answer that I needed to hear in order to kind of light a fire under me and just make me really get this thing into ship shape. So what you're seeing here is my daughter Annie's room, which actually used to be the playroom whenever Annie was still in our room. But kind of as things have changed and we've put a crib in there and we put bookshelves in there and all these things, um, it's really just become a spot where we don't, the girls don't play very often. A lot of the toys are now housed in our living room and in my other daughter Rosie's room. So the solution that I came up with here was to make the dramatic play center Annie's entire room. So all the baby dolls, the play sink and kitchen, the baby doll accessories, the kitchen stuff, the table and chairs, all of that ended up in Annie's room. And then Rosie's room is designated for Barbies and stuffed animals. I did have to leave a couple of the baby doll bunk beds in there because she plays after she goes to her room for the night um, and that's one of her favorite things but you guys I was so proud of her I asked if she could help me go through her basket of stuffed animals and maybe we could part with some that um, other people could get more use out of or might enjoy more than we do and she was like right off the bat so willing and ended up getting rid of like half of her stuffed animals we still have a lot but it is a lot less than what we did have and this is just the first time that she's been able to actually help me with the decluttering process which was really sweet she turned four last weekend and i told her that this is exactly what being a big four-year-old is supposed to look like and that somebody else is going to get to enjoy these toys because of her generosity and it was just so precious so very proud of her for that and then our living room remained the centers for art sensory and science reading blocks so this art cabinet is not my favorite thing like aesthetically but goodness I don't know what we would do without it it was a china cabinet that I had gotten for our kitchen and then I ended up putting fabric over the glass doors and now it is our art cabinet and I would be lost without this thing my girls love arts and crafts and I love that they love arts and crafts so anytime someone asks what to get them for birthdays or Christmas or anything I'm always saying something artsy they absolutely love it and you know as much as I hope this works for the current season that we're in I'm also very much hoping for the future because I've mentioned here before that we are very likely giving homeschooling a try when my girls get to that age the way that our oldest daughter's birthday falls it we really kind of have kind of an extra year to figure out exactly what we're doing with that but 
I'm hoping that some of these things can translate into a daily homeschool rhythm. So we'll kind of see how they go. But through all of this, I am hopeful and just trying to figure out now and get my ducks in a row ahead of time for like what works and what is practical for both them learning and them growing as children and also for like us just doing life as a family and having guests over and people in our home and you know the everyday parts of a normal routine so this is something that I've really enjoyed thinking through. I'm all the time changing things to see what could be done better, what could be more efficient. I'm hopeful that this has made a difference and that this will work for a while. For as long as we stay in this space, I want us to be good stewards of it. I want us to manage it well, and I want us to appreciate it. So we want to take care of the things that God has blessed us with, and that's what we're trying to do here. Thanks so much for coming along. I hope that you've enjoyed this, and I hope you're having a great day wherever you're at. Bye, guys. 